Okay, so what we're making is something called in my part of Malaysia, Hamin. And I know in other parts of Malaysia, they're called different things. In Penang, it's called Hokkien Mee. They're all slightly different. Um, but this is a Hamin as I used to, well, it's not actually as I used to sell it in my restaurant. I did used to sell Hamin in my restaurant. But today, we are going to actually, uh, like I said, do it for, uh, slightly tweaked. But also, we're going to get as much flavor out of prawn shells as we can, okay? Now, if you followed the event, uh, the event would have stated I needed about a kilo, uh, well, prawn shells from about a kilo's worth of prawns. Um, and yeah, by the way, guys, if there's any technical problems, please let me know, yeah? Uh, but yeah, about a ki uh, prawn shells from about a kilo's worth of prawns, but I've got a lot more than that. And in fact, this isn't even all the prawn shells I have in my fridge, okay? So what this is, it's typically served in my part of Malaysia, it's typically served as a soup with prawns and with shredded chicken. And obviously, uh, a lot of the time it's served with pork, but I don't eat pork, so there's no pork in my food. Um, and also actually it uses chicken broth as well, which I don't have. Again, like I said, I'm using the whole lockdown thing as a little bit of an excuse. So I haven't actually gone out <coughs> to bought some chicken carcass or whatever, which would have been a nice addition. So we're making this with straight prawns, okay? Um, <coughs> sorry, I was about choking. Okay. Um, but yeah, like I said, just say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. And again, guys, if you want the recipe, uh, please sign up to my email list, bit.ly slash Jackie M. Cook along. That particular list that particular form will tag you as someone who's interested in the cook along content okay so that i would know to send out my recipe to to you if you sign up to that particular list otherwise <laughs> you won't get it um because like i said i'm i'm having some issues with facebook where they're starting to mark my content as a bit spammy even though all i'm doing is responding to people and saying here's the recipe um, but okay, so there are a couple of things we're going to make. We're going to make the prawn soup, but the prawn soup is going to consist of, like I said, crushed prawn shells. Okay, so we're not just actually frying and turning this into a stock, we're actually turning this into a paste that you can store in your fridge and then use as an instant prawn paste every time you want some prawn soup. Okay, so you're not required to make a big pot of prawn stock prawn soup that you're going to have to like especially if you <laughs> live in a, <laughs> my household um that you're gonna have to consume all weekend okay so you, we're gonna turn this into a prawn paste you store it in a jar in your fridge and every time you feel like prawn noodle soup you just get out some paste and you're gonna turn it into a beautiful broth for your prawn noodle soup that's what we're going to do first of all second of all we're going to make the sambal with it okay now like i said uh different parts of malaysia they do their prawn noodle soup a little bit different the way i used to do it and the way we used to have it back in my part of malaysia was actually the soup was not spicy okay the soup was prawny it wasn't spicy but uh you have a separate sambal that you can actually um, stir into the soup and also use as a condiment on the side to have with everything okay so that's what we're going to do um I know because like I said, like I've posted, I've done a live video of this like seven years ago and I had some people from Penang saying, that's not how we make it in Penang. But anyway, okay, so my excuse this time around is, like I said, you know, it's not how we did it in, uh, in my part of Malaysia. Okay, there's my version and also we're doing the lockdown version and we're going to crush these shells finely into a paste, okay? So, um, now. For the soup, it's pretty super simple. We're going to peel some prawns, but I did actually post a couple of hours ago asking you to actually, if you can, go ahead and peel your prawns, okay? So we're going to use the prawn shells to make the stock with, the, the stock paste with, and we're going to use the prawns as, uh, uh, you know, to, to eat the noodles with. And insofar as the type of noodles, typically in my part of Malaysia, you would have it with a mixture of vermicelli or dried rice sticks and uh, Hokkien noodles, which are the fresh egg noodles, okay? Um, but we're not going to do that today. Again, like I said, I didn't actually specify what type of noodles you want in the ingredients list. Have it with whatever you like, okay? I'm actually personally going to have it with fresh rice noodles tonight, okay? So here in my part of Australia, okay, and here you go. These are just thin fresh rice noodles okay so i'm going to eat it with this whatever works for you okay if you've got chicken if you've got chicken for this whether you've got a whole chicken or whether you've got chicken breast put uh cover it with some water and put it on the stove and start simmering okay uh it, and, and nothing else just just the chicken with water and simmer it till it's cooked and you want it just like and then you want to take it out let it cool down and you want to shred it into 
um, uh, chicken shreds, okay? But like I said, let's do the prawns. These are banana prawns, okay? The reason why they're banana prawns because they're the cheapest <laughs> of the kind of prawns uh, you can find here in Sydney, okay? Obviously, it will be different in your part of the world. So back in my restaurant day, I would actually peel the prawn, leave the last bit here, the little tail here, okay? Intact just for aesthetics, okay? If you want, you can peel it all the way. And like I said, in certain parts of Malaysia, the way they serve their prawn noodle soup, they would actually um, fry up the prawns with some of the sambal, so it's spicy and it's also cooked through. And to do that, they also cut the prawns in half um, along this length, okay? So that it becomes like thin, and you basically get like visually, so you get two 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 prawn pieces, okay? But you cut it all the way. But we can do that, but we're not going to fry it. We're just going to poach it and have it quite light, okay? So the version of prawn noodle soup I grew up eating, like I said, it's virtually like the what they have in Ipoh, which they call sa ho fun, okay? Um, but not quite. It's kind of like a straddling, like you know, <laughs> a little bit, but. Uh, Okay, I hope I've shared this out to everywhere, but let's just have a quick look and make sure. Um, okay, is anyone like now? Okay, here we go. Andrew, Elizabeth, I have to go to my car now, watch replay, okay, no worries. Uh, and Chi Ming, hey, how are you? <laughs> Andrew, uh, I'm sending out the recipe via my email now, so if you're, uh, I don't know if you've previously signed up to bit.ly slash Jackie M cook along. It's my email list, but that specifically tags you as someone who is interested in the recipe. Okay. Cause I don't want to be blasting my recipe out to my entire email list because people <laughs> might get annoyed. <laughs> Surprisingly, there are people who follow me who may not necessarily appreciate having a recipe email to them. But um, yeah, so if you sign up there, but like I said, uh, Facebook has been marking my, cause I've been, private messaging you guys with the recipe based on your request in the comments but Facebook has been marking them as spam and stopping me from being able to do that and it's kind of like coincided with me finding some weird little glitches in Facebook including not allowing me to reshare articles to my Jackie M food page so uh, I don't know if it's a separate glitch or whether it's because Facebook is trying to <laughs> limit my ability to reach my audience, so it's been a little bit frustrating. So what we're going to do, sign up to my email list, bit.ly slash Jackie M cook along, all level case. It is case sensitive. And um, I will send out the recipe when it's ready, usually sometime middle of the next week. And so sign up for it now before I, <laughs> what I'm going to do, once this whole lockdown thing is over, I'm gonna compile all these recipes and sell it as an ebook. So get it now for free or pay for it later. <laughs> okay, so we're peeling the prawns and I forgot to mention, if you don't know how to peel prawns, um, like I said, uh, one thing I notice a lot of Aussies do, like when it comes to the prawn heads is that they just break it off. Okay, don't do that because a lot of the prawn meat is in the head. Okay, so what you wanna do, just like look for the, the joint here and just lift it up over here like this, okay? And just break it off. And then you've taken off the top part of the head, just flip it around. You see all the, the feelers, okay? You peel it like that, okay? You see, look at how much prawn meat you've got left, okay? That would have otherwise ended up in the prawn shell, okay? And don't ever throw your prawn shells away, guys. Just toss them in a takeaway box and chuck it in your freezer. And do this every few weeks or so when you run out of prawn paste, okay? And you will never look at, you know, it's kind of like, stretching your food budget to some extent, right? But I think a lot of... <laughs> I'm amazed I haven't got any hate mail from white people yet. <laughs> um, but, I think, you know, the whole idea with like boiling prawns, like Aussies like to buy their, their, their cooked prawns and their cooked seafood and they go to these expensive buffets, these high-end restaurants, uh, high-end hotels and all the seafood is all boiled. To me, it's such an incredible waste of seafood <laughs> because when you boil it, all the flavor ends up in the water that you uh, throw out, right? So we don't generally eat boiled lobster or boiled prawns or whatever. We like them raw so we can cook them, okay? Um, so that's what we're doing. But having said that, if you do have some pr uh, boiled prawns, right? Cooked prawns, the prawn shells from the cooked prawns will work as well, okay? 
So I'm being a little bit hypocritical here <laughs> because I do sometimes buy cooked prawns when I like say for instance um, I'm, I'm, I'm cutting up all these prawns right I'm making prawn noodle soup I run out of prawns I've got like all this prawn paste sitting in my fridge and I don't want to have to like defrost and, 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 and peel and cook more prawns separately to go with my prawn noodle soup then I might buy like you know half a kilo of cooked prawns and just throw them in like that okay so there you go Hey, Hanim, how are you? <laughs> no, Hanim is my school, uh, my school uh, schoolmate from Malaysia, and you know we haven't seen each other for over forty years. Isn't that nuts? <laughs> but I, I think it's so cool that we are actually able to still keep in touch via social media after all these years. Um, all right, so we've got the prawn shells. Okay, so like I said, these are just like shells that I've accumulated from my prawn consumption, which clearly <laughs> is a little bit uh, above average. Okay, so we've got the prawn shells and then we've got some onion. This is actually going to be for the sambal, okay? But let me just turn on the stove here. And we're going to start frying up the prawn shells. And at this point, ideally, you want some fresh garlic. I don't have a lot of fresh garlic left, unfortunately, because garlic kind of like, I used to buy the peeled garlic cloves and I haven't been able to find them. The last time I bought it, the price had increased uh, more than three times. Because usually I pay like $6 for a bag of peeled garlic. And the last time I went to the shops, because of the lockdown thing and presumably whatever else, <laughs> um, they actually cost $20, right? So let's have a look. Let's close this. <laughs> hey, Carl, how are you? Rockstar. <laughs> I love the, I love the, uh, the, the, the American contingent rec represented by Andrew and Carl and a few other people. So it's so cool to have you guys join because I know it's like, I don't know, it'll be an hour in your part of the world. Now, right before I went live, right, I posted the fact that uh, I'd like you to have some prawn shells ready for this particular recipe. And one of my community members at my Malaysia, um, Jackie M's Malaysian Street Food Kitchen, he actually said <clears throat> he used to sell this in Malaysia. So he actually would boost the prawn flavor by adding some dried, pro, uh, dried shrimp. Okay, it's not the type of dried shrimp that you would usually use in like sambal, uh, you know, kangkung blachan and that sort of stuff. This is a smaller type of dried shrimp and I happen to have some on hand. So I figured like, let, let's do this. Let's add some of this in um, because he says it makes it more prawny. Though to be fair, I've never felt the need to that for the, you know, should I add it? Okay, look, I'm just going to throw a little bit in and see what difference it makes. I've never added this in before, but so just pretend that you didn't see this, okay? But I'm just doing it for my own experimentation, see how it turns out. So let's do this. Hey, Venkatashin, how are you? Okay, gloves. Okay, so we want some, um, some garlic, okay? And let me just show you the garlic I have. I'm going to top it up with more garlic that's dried, okay? Like I said, that's all I have of the fresh garlic. Okay, heating this up. I probably need a bigger pan, in all honesty. Okay, so prawn shells. And this could be quite a divisive, <laughs> uh, what do you call it? session because I'm going to be use, using chicken powder and you guys know that I use chicken powder a lot in my cooking but uh, you can use salt in the other chicken powder but I really think that if you're not using especially if you're not using chicken broth to you know to make the stock with and whatever che the, the, the cheat is the chicken powder okay the cheat ingredient okay so let's throw all this in Again, guys, just say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Okay, so let me just see if you can see it here. I, I need this over here because I need to do some stuff here, but you get the idea. Let's have a look. Okay, so garlic. Okay. So this is the garlic I usually would use, okay? You see it's all peeled garlic cloves. That's nowhere near enough, okay? Um, obviously, like the amount of, uh, what do you call it? The amount 
of uh, prawn shells that you would be cooking if you were following my my, my, my list of ingredients would be a lot smaller, so that would probably be enough for one kilo, okay? But I like lots of garlic in this. So I'm gonna throw, these are garlic granules, okay? Throw this in, okay? Remember, <laughs> lockdown cooking, so don't, don't, <laughs> don't hate on me for all these shortcuts and hacks, okay? So this is happening, and we're going to add some oil in this in a little bit, but not yet, because there's still a lot of, you saw a lot of like water, from the defrosted prawn shells. Okay, so we're gonna let this sit and cook. And insofar as the type of vegetables, I mentioned in the list, just like whatever Asian greens, but typically you would have it with uh, ong choy, which are water convolvulus, and also or gang gong. And also you would have garlic chives with it. Okay, I don't have either, and I didn't rush out to buy it because like I said, we're trying to stay in the spirit of lockdown cooking, whatever you can dig out from your fridge or pantry, so I'm using actually gai lan, right, or Chinese broccoli, okay, so we're gonna cut this into chunks here, and gai lan typically has quite a sturdy stem, so just kind of like cut it lengthwise to help it along in terms of cooking, okay, but like I said, usually you would actually have this with gang gong, which is actually out of season here in Australia, right, as we speak, or and you would have uh, Chinese uh, garlic chives, which I think a lot of Aussies confuse with uh, regular chives, like you know the skinny chives that you put on your baked potato. So that's not that. Okay. Okay. Like I said, these are dried shrimp that one of my community members, Thomas Thomas Hung, who used to sell prawn noodle soup in Malaysia. He said he used to put this in, okay, to help boost the flavor. So we're gonna, and look, don't do what I do. You're supposed to actually rinse it and, and, and strain it out. But I'm just gonna chuck some in and see how it turns out. And I'll report back in my recipe handout in sign up for, hey, David, I'm watching without cooking and repeat. <laughs> okay, sure, <laughs> good on you. <laughs> this is not hard, this is a... So right now we've got garlic, we've got prawn shells, okay? Like I said, that's all you need, but if you so happen to get a hold of these dried shrimp, tiny, tiny dried shrimp, throw some in, okay? I don't know, like Thomas said so, and he sells it, used to sell it. Okay, now, uh, we're going to get ready for the sambal. Okay, you know what? I'm going to also uh, boil some water to cook up the noodles and whatnot with in a bit, okay? So we're gonna get this ready and I'm gonna throw an egg in and boil the egg at the same time as boil as I boil the water. Okay. Now, I know, like in Malaysia, some people are absolute purists. Okay. And here in Australia and in my part of Malaysia, for as long as I remember, when they eat prawn noodle soup, there'll be like half a boiled egg as one of the condiments on top. But apparently, I read somewhere that typically. In Penang, in the early days, you don't have boiled egg in it, and having boiled egg just kind of means that you're not authentic. Guys, I think you need to get over the whole authentic thing, all right? They probably did have boiled eggs when this was invented 100 years ago because they couldn't afford it, <laughs> okay? But things do change, and things like, you know, food does evolve sort of thing, so... Just accept it. <laughs> okay, so like I said, we're just pulling out some of the moisture from this garlic and prawn shell pan here and we're going to get started making the sambal okay David would know my sambal <laughs> but this is actually a nicer sambal than what I serve at my market store with my chakra gel because this is made fresh okay at my market store when I do my pop-up selling chakra gel I serve it with a sambal belacan but that's an even more shortcut way of doing it than what I'm doing tonight, okay? Because I have to do it at the store itself, outdoors, in like 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't be able to keep up with the orders. Okay. Again, guys, thanks again for joining me. Uh, if you know of anyone who would be interested in this content, please share this with them or tag them in this or share it out to any food groups that you think would find this useful, okay? because there are some <laughs> really mean <laughs> admins, food group admins who won't let me share this out to their groups because they want the monopoly on, <laughs> on the content. Um, okay. Let's get this out of the way. 
Okay, so we're going to, like I said, make some sambal blatan to go with this. And that's what these onions are for. And along with the onions, you want some chili. And I am using some frozen bird's eye chilies. I bought the wrong variety. This is, uh, you know, a while back. If you ever go to an Asian grocery store, one that's decently well stocked, at least here in Sydney, you'll find in the freezer section, you'll be able to find a lot of frozen stuff that will cost like one third, one quarter what it costs fresh. And you can get away with using them frozen, okay? I did that with chilies a while back because these chilies can be a little bit hard to come by, but I bought the wrong variety. I bought them with the stem on, all right? So you can either pull off the stem or since it's going in a food processor, you can leave it on. Okay, I've left it on and you can't taste it, especially for what we're making anyway, because you're frying the hell out of it. Okay. Adam, how are you? <laughs> okay, cool. Does anyone know of any high profile Malaysian chefs in the USA? Because I'm working on a project and it's a global project, but um, I'm looking for someone in the USA, but they have to be either a very promising up and comer or they are a celebrity in their own right. Okay. But they have to be, they, I don't, I don't want cooking reality, cooking show contestants and whatever. I mean, it's okay if they've been on a reality cooking show, but I want them to be actual cooks who make a living from their food, okay? <clears throat> <clears throat> so if they sell food for a living, yeah, I'd, I'd like to know, but USA. So let me know if you know anyone. All right, so we're actually just cutting these into chunks. You know what? I am going to tell you this. If I can get a hold of it. All right. So this is my new gadget that I'm still. Well, I haven't actually gone back to the company. I know I've been slack, but if you're in my email list, Jackie M Cook Along email list, you will be in the running to win one of these. Okay, at some point. <laughs> I don't get around to uh, getting back to the company. Okay. So onions. Chilies. If you don't have fresh chilies, you don't have frozen chilies, use chili flakes or just chili powder. Okay, I've done that too. Okay, in fact, when I make it for my business, I use chili uh, crushed dried chilies. Okay, so onion and chilies, and we're going to blitz this. Okay. Let's turn it on. Okay, here you go. Um, Speed. Okay. Okay. Not a lot of chili in there. I might need to boost it. Depending on how spicy that batch of chili is, I might have to add more. Um, chili flakes, like dried crushed chilies to it. Shelly, how are you? Good to see you. What time is it over in your part of the world at the moment? All right, so we've got prawns and garlic, okay? Some of them are fresh garlic and some are dried garlic and we've peeled some prawns over here. So these are the prawn shells and we're going to add the oil now. Okay, you want a fair amount of oil in this, okay? Throw it in. Everything is aga aga, okay? Wherever you get my recipe sent out to you or you come across my recipes on websites and that sort of stuff, just keep in mind there's a healthy dose of aga aga, which is guesstimating attached to them, okay? So <laughs> I, I cook by instinct, I don't measure things, okay? And like I said, I don't know which part of Malaysia you grew up with this dish with, but I, a lot of them actually make this spicy, okay? And 
but I don't. I make it like just as a prawn stock, prawn prawn broth, and I separately make the sambal. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about shrimp paste. Let's move these out of the way a little bit. We're going to get started. Frying up the chili. I'm just going to use this one. Okay, that's what do. Okay. So remember, if you can see this, this is just happily frying along because we only added the oil after the water has mostly been reduced or evaporated. It's not spitting all over the place, okay? So just frying this. <clears throat> and <clears throat> let's turn this on. And we're going to add the onion and garlic, uh, onion and chili mix. Okay. And remember, brown onion has a lot of juice in it. We're going to fry it without the oil until the juice has evaporated. Okay. You can mince it more finely if you want. wondering this is the thermocook pro m so it's the latest model it was sent out to me and the company is going to offer one to give away to my audience but like i said i haven't noted out the details guys i've just had a really busy <laughs> few weeks <laughs> but if you sign up to my email list i will keep you informed on what the deal is and again if you're just joining me uh you're not getting the recipes sent out by a private message anymore you will need to sign up to my email list bit.ly slash Jackie I'm cooking to get a hold of it okay Annie how are you good to see you juice here we're going to reduce this and okay while this is doing that we're going to talk like I said about the shrimp paste now when we mention shrimp paste if you're Malaysian this is what you think of right so we call balacan in Malaysia and what they call thrasi in Indonesia right balacan and it comes in a block like this and nowadays it's a little bit It's a little bit more sophisticated because what the manufacturers have done is actually kind of slice them into slices now, okay? So you can just break off a bit that you want, okay? And then just cut out a chunk. And typically the way you would use it, especially if you're not, especially if you're using it for fresh sambal, you would actually toast it, okay? You can pan fry it on a dry pan until it turns into a crumble. You can toast it under a grill and until it crumbles, right? Um, but it does take a little while and it can stink up the whole house. What I use, what I've been using for my business is this here, same thing, but in powder form, okay? So this is like as if the manufacturer has already toasted it for you, so it's crumbled into a form, so I just tip it in what I need. So that's what I use for my business. Now, I know a lot of people struggle to find Malaysian ingredients. You can, for this particular recipe, you can use Thai shrimp paste, okay? The Thai shrimp paste, you see what it looks like? It's a paste, okay? It's not hard like the Malaysian version, which is either crumbly or, or, or like a cake. This is pasty, and like I said, you can add it in here, but you wouldn't actually try and put this under the grill because it will just get a little bit messy, okay? But since it's being fried up anyway, um, you can actually just add a piece of this directly in there. It's nicer if you do toast it because it really kind of like brings out the pungentness. But um, again, like I said, sometimes it's easier just to kind of like throw a couple of tablespoons of this in there. Now, if you're vegan, if you're vegetarian, you can actually leave it out and you'd be surprised what, uh, you know, how nice it tastes anyway. Um, there are actually vegan 
vegetarian shrimp paste that you can pick up at your Asian grocery store because like I said, Malaysia or you know, those with significant Buddhist communities, right, those countries always have a very strong vegetarian cuisine culture. All right, so any Asian grocery store that's run by like an Asian like me, <laughs> you'll find should have a section dedicated to vegetarian iterations of non-vegetarian ingredients. So you'll find like vegetarian uh, shrimp paste, you'll find vegetarian oyster sauce, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so have a look around there. And I have seen for people wanting to make the prawn noodle soup, a vegan version of it, one of my community members, I'm sorry, I can't remember who, but um, he made a vegan version of prawn noodle soup, obviously without the prawns, but he used, um, you know that seaweed, that's kind of like crinkly, the, the sturdy type of seaweed? He used that, and he used hikama, which is what we call sun guang in Malaysia, all right, or what we call yam bean in Australia, to make the soup, and apparently it turned out decent. I personally like, because yam bean hikama is expensive in Australia if you can even get a hold of it. I have seen like um, when, I was, uh, when I was promoting Cabramatta as a, for a marketing campaign for the council, a vegetarian Vietnamese restaurant, when they make their pho or their soup, they use a variety of different vegetables in their stock, including radish, right? So if you're vegetarian, think of getting those white radish. And also they put pineapple in it, okay? So a lot of different ingredients in the soup, anything like any type of vegetable that's kind of like sweet, right? Um, you can add and simmer to produce a flavorsome vegetarian stock, okay? But like, I guess the prawny slant to this is basically the, the seaweed, okay? So give it a shot. Look at how much steam this is generating. You can barely see what's going on now. <laughs> I hope I don't trigger the smoke alarm. <laughs> okay, let's move this around. Okay. So again, garlic, prawns, and I threw in some dried shrimp, but you can leave it out. It's my first time adding dried shrimp to it. And like I said, if you've got some chicken that you're boiling at home, once it's just cooked, don't overcook it, take it out and let it cool down and then you want to shred the meat on the grain, okay? And then you're going to toss it in some pepper, some salt and some sesame oil, okay? But I'm not using that today, so just do what I say, <laughs> but uh, just pretend. <laughs> pretend I'm doing that along with you, okay? Okay. So this is frying up beautifully. And then we're gonna add the seasoning in here directly, okay? Because we're turning this into a paste, remember? And put some pepper in. And I'm using black pepper because I don't have any white, but more commonly you would use white pepper. And you're going to add some sugar, okay? And I'm gonna add chicken powder, okay? So if you're leery about chicken powder, put a bit of salt instead, but obviously not a uh, one-to-one -one ratio of chicken powder to salt because chicken powder is a lot more um, scaled back, okay? Salt is just sharp and salty. Um, but if you don't have chicken powder but you're not averse to MSG, then put some MSG plus salt in this, okay? Okay, remember, generous amount of oil in here. Lots of garlic. I'm using a combination of dried and fresh garlic, but ideally you would want all fresh garlic. Okay, so this, let's turn this off. What we're going to do now, So transfer this into a blender.
Okay, we're gonna blitz this into a paste. Okay, let me just. Okay, so the water is boiling in here with the boiled egg, and we're gonna take out the egg. And we're gonna boil some prawns in there. I don't. Want, this water is like for boiling the noodles and the vegetables, so that the soup does not get contaminated with the flavor of the of the boiled vegetables and stuff. But typically, ideally, you would want to boil the prawns in with the soup because the prawn flavor permeating the soup can only be a good thing, right? But <coughs> because we're only doing a small amount, <coughs> we're going to add it in. But we'll do that in a second, okay? We're not, we're not in any hurry to make up the, to boil up the vegetables and the noodles because we still got the sambal to go. Okay, let me just, let me just blitz the prawn stuff, okay? So I'm going to be out of shot, but this is going to be a little bit loud. Okay, so that's my prawn noodle paste. Let's move this back over here. Okay, so the prawn paste ready we're making the sambal sambal balachan okay again if you are vegetarian or you don't have any balachan don't stress out too much this tastes pretty good even without the balachan okay but the other thing i want to mention is a lot of people confuse dried shrimp and shrimp paste they're not the same thing guys you don't generally replace one with the other though you can if you're really desperate i guess you can <laughs> but yeah they're not the same thing a lot of people get them mixed up okay so like i said these are in chunks you can throw a chunk in um but it does get a little bit sticky so you need to mix it in properly so what we're going to do we're just going to use my blatan powder which is easier and as usual i always sound like i'm promoting their product but i'm just telling you what i use for my business okay toy how are you good to see you <laughs> Okay, this smells like very like uh, like boiled raw onion at the moment, but we're gonna add some oil to this, okay? And then we're gonna fry it up so it's nice and aromatic and caramelized and all that stuff. You can still hear the how how wet it sounds, okay? So we still want to pull a little bit more moisture out of it before we add the oil. And let's start <coughs> cooking the vegetables and the prawns and all that stuff. Okay, let's do the noodles first because the noodles are going to be at the bottom of the bowl. Okay, these types of noodles. So whatever noodles you're using, because I didn't specify in the ingredients list, just follow the cooking instructions, okay? <coughs> These are fresh rice noodles and they actually, they, they don't need any cooking per se. You can actually like, because they're already cooked, you can virtually just pour some boiling water, a kettle of boiling water over it and strain it out, okay? It's already done. Let's just, let me just get a bowl for this. Okay. If you got bean sprouts, you can throw some bean sprouts into. And every time you agitate the water in a pot, 
right? It sounds like it's obvious, but you basically bring down the temperature. So you want to ideally just <coughs> bring it back up to 10 before you add the next slot in. <coughs> okay, so we've got the chili and the onion frying away here. Then we're going to add some oil to this. Okay, again, fair round of oil. And guys, I know the Penang version is different. This is the version I grew up eating and this is the version I sold in my restaurant, okay? So in my restaurant, I didn't crush the shells. Crushing the shells is going to actually make your soup look a little bit cloudy, but it will be a lot more flavorsome, okay? If you were actually, if you did what I did and you didn't have a blender or you rather you just like throw it in straight, right? Use it straight, then you would throw this into the water that you use to poach the chicken with, okay, that's your chicken stock, or if you're really full on and you actually boil up a big pot of chicken stock using like chicken carcass, chicken bones and whatever, you would add that straight. That's what I used to do at my restaurant. Now because we're doing this lockdown style and also we're making the paste as an instant prawn paste, we're not doing any of that, okay, we're just going to reconstitute the paste into soup by just adding water to it. Okay, let's add more oil to this. We want a fair bit of oil, remember? And like I said, guys, share this out to uh, anybody who might be interested in this. Any food groups, if you think that they uh, need some injection of Malaysian cooking, share it to them. <laughs> they don't like when I share it out because a lot of the admin seniors are competing against them, right? Which is, I guess, <laughs> their prerogative. <laughs> I had someone from one of the groups saying, oh, you wouldn't be, uh, you know, I wouldn't imagine you'd be allowing other people to promote their content on your Facebook groups. I said, yeah, I do that all the time. What the hell? <laughs> but, you know, I guess different people have different levels of tolerance about what's considered self-promotion. Um, <laughs> And in fact, guys, if you want to have a little bit of fun, join my Facebook group, right? Uh, Jackie M's Malaysian Street Food Kitchen. Every Saturday night, we have a virtual hangout. Well, we might move the time around because people in America are struggling to be able to join it because of the time zone difference. But we have so much fun. We meet our community members via Zoom and we talk about Malaysian food and all that kind of stuff, get to know each other. <laughs> so join it. Look up Jackie M's Malaysian Street Food Kitchen. So that's the free group. That's where, look, I would love if you share your content there because that's the whole point of that group is uh, for people to share their recipes and whatnot, okay, their videos and all that. Okay, we want to fry this till the onion caramelizes basically, gets a little bit brown or whatever. Add a little bit more oil and basically they always say fry it till the oil separates and you'll know what I mean because the oil is going to actually you know come out the PC needs to be restarted please don't restart me now <laughs> that's not cool So the water is boiling again. Obviously it's been boiling for a bit, I was kind of spaced off on it. So again, because we're using um, Gailan, which has a pretty sturdy stems, we're going to throw the stems in first, okay? Give it a little bit of a head start. But again, guys, I know that you typically don't use Gailan in this dish, okay? So lay off. <laughs> this this is easier typically I would actually cook this in a wok so I forgot to bring it over 
I don't generally like frying things. <coughs> Stirring things in like shallow pans like this. You know what, I'm going to switch it over to the other one. In goes the leaves. Andrew, I can't stay to the end of the time, sleepy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Catch the replay, huh? There'll be a quiz later. <laughs> right here. Thanks, Andrew. Good to see you. <laughs> Do you add salt to the boiling water? No, I don't. <coughs> No salt, no oil, nothing. <laughs> okay, you see the colors changing? Okay, so let's take out the vegetables. So again, typically you will serve this with ong choy or kangkong and garlic chives, but garlic chives you would typically you won't actually cook the garlic chives, you actually cut them into two inch lengths and put them on top, okay? And if you've got the shredded chicken, <coughs> remember, you separately poach the chicken, shred it, and toss it in some pepper and salt and sesame oil, and then put it on top here, okay? And now we're gonna boil some prawns for this. even more oil in this, okay? Just looking a little bit dry. <laughs> so like I said, you know, there are some recipes where they actually fry the prawns with the sambal. I don't do that, okay? I, I tend to like to keep it plain like this. Okay, so just that. And then we're gonna use this pot again. I'm gonna get rid of the water. So boil some more water to make the soup with, okay? So let's turn this. Okay, so you want, there's a fairly small serve here, so I don't need that much. Bring the water to a boil, and then I start seasoning the sambal. Okay, so so far it's just onion, garlic. Oh no, sorry, onion, chili. No garlic in this. Onion, chili, and <coughs> oil. We we'll just put in the sambal, uh, the prawn uh, shrimp paste. Okay, this is in powdered form. A little bit of sugar. It's up to you how much you put in. When I make it for my business, I put more sugar in because I serve it with something else other than this, okay? For this particular dish, I like it quite savory. So just a little bit of sugar, just to cut, <coughs> cut through the savoriness. Let me sit there, put a little bit more. <laughs> okay. And at this point, you can put soya sauce, okay? That's like a Chinese twist to this. My stepmom always uses soya sauce in this. And soya sauce is fried up with this. Actually brings out a nice flavor. <coughs> okay, and when I make a gluten free version, I use fish sauce. Okay, so either or, I'm just showing you, you can use both. And if you want a little bit more body to this, chicken powder. And I had someone like abuse me on <laughs> YouTube for putting chicken powder in my summer blusher, <laughs> but it works, you know. Don't diss it till you try it. This. Okay, and just taste test this. It's fine, it's plenty spicy. 
And you know what? Can I probably add a little bit more fish sauce in this? Okay. Let's get some fried onion. There's something else that I do on a regular basis as well. I, you know, the big brown onions that I use, I fry them up into crispy onion. I put them inside and I pull them out when I have this dish. So voila, this is done. Okay. So this was four four onions fried up with some crushed chili, crushed chili, dry chili, whatever. So this water is boiling. Let's bring this across over here. So, oh no, actually, no, let's leave it over there. So, so if you're using chicken stock or using the water that you poach the chicken with, you can use that in your water. But we're just using water, which is what I actually do at home a lot of the time, okay? Because I don't always have chicken stock on hand or <laughs> can't be bothered to pull it out, okay? So, from paste, okay? I do have a strainer. Okay, now like I said, doing it this way does make your soup more cloudy, okay? But I think it's a good trade-off because it means you've got a more flavoursome soup. Let me just get a spoon. If you're living, if, you, if you're making this and sending it off to your kid who's at university, at college, and staying in a dorm, you can actually reconstitute this just by pouring a like, kettle of boiled water into a bowl and adding the paste in it, okay? So, voila. So you don't need any amount of simmering. Okay, so... That's your prawn noodle soup. Like I said, if you like it spicy, you can put a dollop of this, stir it into the soup. We're not going to do that. That's the boiled egg. Okay, so you've got the boiled egg. Let's move this across. Okay, and that's my spoon again. Okay, there you go. So prawn noodle soup. Okay, look at how orange the soup looks because of the, like I said, because you're squeezing every last ounce of flavor from the prawn shells. Okay, so this actually tastes really good. Give it a shot. Got any questions? Hey, let's just clean my hands a little. <coughs> okay, so yeah. Does that all make sense? Is that easier to pull together? How long did it take? It took us like 45 minutes from the time I started, okay? So now, like I said, where is the, this prawn paste, you can throw them into jars, you can throw them into the freezer if you want, okay? So these are just like prawn paste. Every time you feel like prawn noodle soup, separately boil some noodles and some prawns, and then like, uh, reconstitute the paste with a bit of water or if you want to go upscale some stock okay but the stock cannot be seasoned because the seasoning is already all in here okay um if you want the recipe don't forget sign up to bit.ly slash jackie m cook along um my goodness we finished like in really good time today so don't forget if you sign up to my list i still need to nod out the details of the company that supplied me with the uh, thermal cook pro m uh you can look up their website for details on the specs of this okay this is basically like a thermal mix um those are the things that a thermal mix does and one of you who signed up to my list i'm going to offer it as a giveaway okay um Okay, any questions, hit me up. Um, don't forget to share this out to people who you think will find this useful. And I really appreciate you guys, guys. Um, this has been really good fun. And uh, <laughs> hit me up with any questions. And don't forget to join my free Facebook community, my Jackie Evans Malaysian Street Food Kitchen. And that's where we have a lot of fun. That's where you get to meet me uh, virtually 
there interacting with the other community members. We have so much fun that, um, yeah, <laughs> I root a time when the, the whole lockdown thing is over and people get back to their normal lives because we hang out virtually and just banter and all that sort of stuff. Okay, guys, thanks again. I will see you next week. Okay, ciao.